The things that, that we are dealing with in the CRC for water sensitive cities are really mainly around harvesting storm water uh, for a range of benefits. And some of those benefits include uh, irrigating vegetation so that um, we, we have green, green infrastructure that is evapotranspiring. So green vegetation that is evapotranspiring is, is, is really good at cooling the city in two ways. One, through, um, through the evaporation process itself that takes heat with it uh, and produces cooling at the surface of the, of the evapotranspiring object. Uh, but also the green vegetation is cooler uh, than uh, other hard surfaces. So green vegetation is good from that respect. Um, and it also provides shade. So for all sorts of reasons, irrigated green infrastructure is one of the best things. So, so what we've done is at a whole range of scales, from the micro scale through the neighbourhood scale out to the city-wide scale, uh, we've done observational work, we've done modelling work and uh, remote sensing work. And what we've been able to show is that Many of the treatments that we look at that are related to water sensitive cities, you know, so roadside uh, swales, um, you know, uh, tree pits, um, you know, irrigated uh, gardens, um, and uh, the whole range of, of things, including increased, uh, you know, tree cover and so on. Um, most of those things can contribute cooling of one to two degrees. Um, so a, a combination uh, of, those, of those things can actually quite dramatically reduce uh, city temperatures across a, a range of scales. If we can reduce the heat loading on the city, uh, for example, by changing the building materials, and in particular by changing something called the albedo of surfaces, by making surfaces more reflective, then that also reduces the energy absorbed at the surface and, and also provides cooling. So the work that we've done recently um, has focused on the dual benefits of changing albedo of cities plus vegetation and irrigation. So the three things together do provide the best, a much better bang for the buck, as it were. Uh, changing albedo usually focuses on roof top. Uh, and so we find that, uh, you know, just simply across, for example, we've modeled the city of Melbourne, uh, on an extreme heat event day, changing the roof albedo from something like 30% to 70% across all buildings can reduce the extreme air temperatures by about one and a half degrees, uh, or one to one and, one and a half degrees. If you add in irrigated green infrastructure, you can get that cooling to closer to two degrees. And that's really significant because uh, a two degree cooling is really enough to start saving lives under extreme heat. So the albedo simply means the solar reflectivity. Uh, and it's usually measured um, in percentage terms. So uh, a, highly, a highly reflective roof would be up around 80, 90%. A normal black roof, like a, just a, a black tile roof or a dark, very dark grey tile roof, might have an albedo of 15 to 20%. The 15% is the amount of uh, reflectivity of solar radiation from that roof. So the rest of that, the other 85% remains at the roof to heat it. If you've got an, an albedo of 80%, that means 80% is reflected straight away. So that makes a huge difference, as you, can, as you can imagine. However, we can't paint all of the surfaces everywhere white, but we can look at uh, more highly reflective road surfaces, uh, roofs, uh, and so on.